All right, so let's talk about China. Uh, news broke not too long ago, around the end of 2024, that they've cracked a key part of this EUV puzzle. Specifically, a team at the Harbin Institute of Technology figured out a new way to make the special light needed for it. This is the kind of news that makes tech nerds spill their coffee and governments sit up a little straighter in their chairs. Now, why should you care about this? Well, this EUV thing is crucial for making the super advanced computer chips that power, well, everything. For years, this technology has been the closely guarded secret of a select few, mainly a Dutch company called ASML. So China figuring out a piece of this on their own is like them suddenly revealing they've built their own Millennium Falcon in their backyard. It changes the game, or at least it signals that the game is about to get a lot more interesting. If China can mass produce its own advanced chips using its own EUV technology, it fundamentally alters the global tech landscape. So stick around, because this story is just getting started. So, EUV Extreme Ultraviolet Lithography. Sounds complicated, right? And it is, but let's break it down. Think of making a computer chip like baking a very, very tiny cake with incredibly intricate patterns. Lithography is the process of printing those patterns onto the silicon wafer, which is the base ingredient of your chip. Now, to get these patterns super, super small, we're talking nanometers, which are billionths of a meter, you need a very special kind of light, a light with an extremely short wavelength. That's where extreme ultraviolet or EUV light comes in. It has a wavelength of just 13.5 nanometers. Why is this tiny light so important? Because the smaller the patterns you can print on a chip, the more transistors you can cram onto it. Transistors are the little switches that do all the thinking in a chip. More transistors mean more processing power, more speed and more efficiency. This technology is so critical that it's become a major geopolitical chess piece. The ability to produce chips at the 28 nanometer level and below, which EUV enables, is what separates the tech leaders from the tech followers. Now let's zoom in on where this particular spark of Chinese EUV innovation came from. It wasn't just some random lab, it was the Harbin Institute of Technology. Think of it as one of China's top-tier universities for science and engineering. And on December 30th, 2024, they got a first prize for a project on an EUV laser light source. The person leading this charge is Professor Zhao Yongpeng. He and his team have been working on how to create that all-important 13.5 nanometer EUV light efficiently and effectively. Their project focused on something called a Discharge Plasma EUV Light Source. The Harbin team's success suggests a significant accumulation of knowledge and capability within China. So what is this Discharge Plasma EUV Light Source that the Harbin Institute cooked up? The boffins are calling their method Laser Induced Discharge Plasma, or LDP for short. Essentially, it's China's new recipe for making that super special EUV light. Think of it like this. You need a really, really, really bright and specific kind of flash for your tiny chip-making camera. LDP is their proposed new flashlight design, and they think it's pretty clever, possibly even a game-changer compared to what's currently out there. It's all about how you get the material, in this case, tin to give off that precise 13.5 nanometer wavelength light. Here's the simplified version of how LDP works according to the reports. First, you take some tin, you vaporize it, turning it into a cloud of tin gas. This tin cloud is then zapped, but not just with any old zap. It happens between two electrodes, and this zap turns the tin cloud into a plasma. When this tin plasma gets excited in just the right way, bingo! It emits the EUV light that everyone's after. The proponents of this LDP method suggest it has some nifty advantages. Section 5, the EUV tech tussle LDP versus LP. A quick look. All right, so China's got this new LDP method for making EUV light, but what's it up against? The reigning champion, the big cheese in the EUV world, is a method called laser-produced plasma, or LPP. This is the technology that ASML, the Dutch giant, has perfected and uses in its all-conquering EUV lithography machines. So it's LDP from China versus LPP from, 
well, mostly the Netherlands, think of it as a David and Goliath situation. So how does ASML's LPP work? It's incredibly complex, a real marvel of engineering. Imagine tiny droplets of molten tin smaller than a human hair being fired into a vacuum chamber at high speed. Then each droplet is zapped not once but twice by an extremely powerful carbon dioxide laser. The first pulse flattens the droplet into a pancake shape and the second, much more powerful pulse obliterates it, turning it into a plasma that emits that crucial 13.5 nanometer EUV light. This all happens thousands of times a second. It requires incredibly precise lasers, mirrors and control systems to make it all work. Now compare that to China's LDP. As we discussed, LDP vaporizes tin into a cloud between two electrodes and then a discharge converts that cloud into plasma. Section 6. The Long March to EUV Hurdles for Huawei and SME. So China has this promising LDP light source from Harbin. Great news for them, right? Well, yes, but it's not like they can just plug it in and start churning out world-beating chips tomorrow. Developing a full EUV lithography machine is an incredibly complex undertaking. And the light source, while critical, is just one piece of a very large, very expensive puzzle. Companies like Huawei and Shanghai Microelectronics Equipment, or SME, still face a long and rocky road. One of the biggest hurdles is turning a lab breakthrough into a commercially viable manufacturing tool. SME, for instance, filed a patent for an EUV radiation generator back in March 2023. But even with years of effort, SMAE has struggled to match ASML's capabilities in mass-producing reliable lithography equipment. Section 7 Uncle Sam's tech blockade sanctions and their sting. Now, you can't talk about China's push for EUV and semiconductor independence without talking about the United States and its sanctions. For several years now, Washington has been putting the squeeze on China's access to advanced semiconductor technology. The US argument is usually about national security and preventing China from using advanced tech for military purposes. The US effectively barred China from acquiring the most advanced semiconductor manufacturing tools and that specifically includes EUV lithography machines from ASML. The Netherlands, where ASML is based, eventually fell in line and by January 15th, 2025, they officially expanded their own restrictions. These sanctions have had a direct impact. Companies like Huawei have seen their consumer business hit hard because they couldn't get the advanced chips they needed. This has forced Chinese companies to rely on domestic foundries like SMAC, which face their own limitations without access to EUV tools. Section 8. Standing Alone. China's quest for tech independence. Faced with these sweeping US sanctions and export controls, what's a global superpower with massive technological ambitions to do? Well, China's answer is pretty clear. If we can't join them, we'll try to beat them by building it ourselves. This whole push for domestic EUV technology, the efforts of Huawei to design and get its AI chips like the Ascend 910C manufactured, and SME's work on lithography machines, it's all part of a grand strategy. A strategy aimed squarely at achieving technological self-sufficiency, or at least significantly reducing its reliance on foreign technology, especially from the West. The Chinese government sees advanced semiconductors as a foundational technology for future economic growth and national power. So they're pouring billions into research and development, supporting domestic companies and fostering talent in these crucial areas. The Harbin Institute's EUV light source breakthrough is a perfect example of this focused effort bearing fruit. You can see this drive for self-reliance in Huawei's actions. Despite the immense challenges and low yields, they are pushing ahead with chips like the Ascend 910B and the upcoming 910C. This quest for technological independence is a long-term game. Section 9 to the Global Tech Chessboard. What happens next? So China's making moves, developing its own EUV light source, pushing its chip industry forward despite sanctions. What does this all mean for the rest of us, for the global tech industry, for the phone in your pocket? Well, buckle up, because things are likely to get even more interesting. If China successfully masters EUV technology and ramps up domestic production of advanced semiconductors, it could fundamentally redraw the map of the global tech landscape. One potential outcome is increased competition, which in theory could be good for consumers. 
More players innovating and producing advanced chips could eventually lead to lower prices and faster technological advancements. However, this could also lead to a bifurcation of technology ecosystems, a sort of tech cold war, with a Chinese sphere and a Western sphere, each with its own standards and dominant players. The geopolitical ramifications are, of course, huge. Technological leadership is increasingly intertwined with global influence. If China becomes a major independent power in advanced semiconductors, it shifts the balance of power. For the tech world, it means more innovation, more competition, but also more uncertainty.